What's up guys, it's your boy LAJ. I'm real excited for this video. I waited till after I saw Tony Gonsolin and Dustin May make their their debuts. And let me tell you something, they exceeded my expectations. So I hope you guys are ready and are excited to find out what I'm about to say because it's a lot of great news. Although it might seem like bad news, but it's gonna be great news and here's why. So let's get to it. I'm coming up with 32 point Three, three, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Oh, it's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, jump up. Ready, guys? Let's do this. Leroy Dragons! Oh, my God, he just ran in. Save him. Oh, gee, stick to the plane. Oh, uh, gee, let's go, let's go, let's go. Stick to the pledge. Uh, stick to the plane. Oh, gee, oh, fuck. Oh, my let's start off with the Mets. The trade deadline was... I guess uncharacteristically big for the Dodgers. I mean, they traded for Yu Darvish, but that was on the waiver deadline. They traded for Manny Machado. That also didn't work out. So both of these trades were the biggest trades in the regular season during the trade deadline, and they didn't work out for the Dodgers. Now, I don't think some of these teams realized that there wasn't a second waiver deadline anymore this year. And a team like the Mets, who traded for Marcus Stroman, who would have been a good addition for the Dodgers, and the Reds, who picked up out of nowhere, they picked up Bauer uh, from the Cleveland Indians for Yasiel Puig. I mean, it got Bauer out of that situation, out of the contention, but it put Puig into a better situation. Hopefully he comes up clutch and eliminates both the Yankees and the Astros to face the Dodgers in the World Series. That would be pretty epic. But nonetheless, uh, the Dodgers didn't do much other than pick up utility guys. We'll get into that in a little bit. But let's talk about the biggest addition out of this trade deadline year. And that is Zach Greinke surprisingly waiving his no trade clause to go to the Houston Astros. Now they got a big three-headed monster with Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, and Zach Greinke with... I, I, man, Wade Miley, I think, is killing it for them as well. So that team is pretty stacked. I'm not even going to front with you guys. I'm honestly and genuinely worried about them because, uh, yo, that front line is rotation is pretty, pretty deadly. Um, they picked up, and, and essentially, they now have the one, two, and three best pitchers in baseball as far as whip goes. Now, Am I considering the Dodgers as now not having a chance? Absolutely not. But they do look more, I, I guess, deadlier than the 2017 Houston Astros. Um, unfortunately for them, though, the Dodgers do look slightly better than the 2017 Dodgers. I know they're two games under from what they were performing in 2017 as of right now. But for some reason, to me, the Dodgers this year look so much better. Um, so let's do some of the big takeaways and some of the good about the Dodgers and what they currently have. And um, am I entirely mad that they didn't make any big trades? No. But let me explain to you guys and let me help you guys uh, understand where I'm going and, and how I feel and why I'm not so worried about why they didn't make any trades. Um, but let's start off with the bad. When you look at teams like the Nationals who picked up Hunter Strickland and, uh, and Hudson and then the Braves who were the ones who actually picked up Shane Green, I'm not too entirely upset that the Dodgers only picked up Adam Kolarik. So here's the thing. Everything that I'm going to say is very critical on my behalf. I'm critical as fuck. You, already guys, you're, you guys already know. If you guys have been following me for a minute, you guys already know that whether they perform well or they don't, I talk a lot of shit about my teams, my favorite players and everything. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so my only condition is instead of fixing the pen, they opted to, tra to trade for three utility players, Jed Jerko, Tyler White, and Christopher Negron. Out of those three guys, Jed Jerko hasn't even played yet. He's still in the, in the DL, and he's set to come back next week. Tyler White obviously hasn't worked out, and uh, the Houston Astros were laughing in our faces when we took him. So there's that fail. But Christopher Negron is actually the only one that's performing pretty well, and I'm I'm fairly excited to see what he's capable of, especially right now that Kike Taylor and now Alex Verdugo are out on the DL. And, and I'm hoping he could pick it up. But I, we should expect either Kike and Chris Taylor to come back within the next couple of weeks. But if we don't, it's not necessarily such a, such a bad thing. Um, so this is the team we're rolling with. This is it. This is officially it. We got like about an under 50 games to go. And this is going to be the team. Is it bad? No. 
Absolutely not. Have you guys seen Ryu? Have you guys seen Bueller? Kershaw? Bueller had, what was it, 16, 15 strikeouts? Uh, Kershaw plays tonight, so he keeps he keeps doing his thing. Um, so what I'm what I'm envisioning for the postseason and moving forward is obviously great things, and this is why I waited till after Tony Gonsolin and Dustin May made their debuts. So I'm pretty sure you guys are in agreement that they have great stuff, and as you guys can see in these highlights, Tony Gonsolin man came in and just looked like a vet like he knew what he was gonna do it was it was a great outing for Tony Gonsolin it was it was a pretty decent one for Dustin May a lot of stress a lot of a lot of uh, eyes on him but uh, we all know that Kenta Maeda is not gonna be a starting pitcher during the postseason but he is gonna be in addition to the bullpen Ross Stripling if he comes back as well right now he's on the DL if he comes back he's gonna be also a great addition and it's definitely gonna help out the bullpen fix those key problems Julio Diaz and we already know that in the minimal, Pedro Baez and Kenley Jensen are both going to be in the bullpen along with uh, Joe Kelly. Those are the three guys that you can you can pencil in and say these are the three bullpen guys that are definitely going to be in the in the postseason roster. As far as everybody else, that's a that's a toss up. But me personally, I would, I do not want to see Jimmy Garcia in that bitch. I do not want to see Scott Alexander, who's most likely not going to play, not going to pitch anymore. Uh, Caleb Ferguson, I was very high on him. I'm iffy on him. J T. Chargois. Nah, Dylan Floro, nah. So to replace those guys, you add Kenta, you add Stripling, and you add Urias. Now you also could potentially give them another starter, give them a couple more time to pitch. You could add Gonsolin and Dustin May. And you have a starting rotation of Ryu, Kershaw, Bueller. That's essentially a lights out team right there. Um, so I am personally glad that the front office didn't just throw everything to get Felipe Vasquez because I think he's already uh, blown a couple of saves with uh, the Pirates and the trade deadline. So we kind of dodged that bullet. And you already saw what Bryce Harper is doing. You already see what Manuel Machado is doing. They're not living up to their uh, $300 plus million dollar contract. So essentially, you look at it as we dodged the bullet. We didn't have to give up Will Smith, who has been contributing. We didn't give up Tony Gonsolin, who's been contributing. And we didn't give up Dustin May, who has a bright future, to get a relief pitcher who's now starting to show signs of, hey, it is what it is. I call it the way I see it. Uh, but, guys, it's it's almost time. It's almost time. The countdown is starting. We're at 31 games till the Dodgers clinch, um, till they win the division. And, you know, it's going to be a couple more weeks and they're in. Everybody else is, like, struggling to get in, but the Dodgers are going to breeze right through into the World Series. There's no stopping this rotation and the way this offense is going. Man, it, it's it's going to turn out to be better. This is going to definitely be the year. But you guys should definitely be excited about the postseason. And to be Dave Roberts right now, not knowing or not being able to say definitely who is going to be that guy that they're going to be on the roster is a good thing in an essential. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. You guys should definitely be excited as well. And what I'm telling you guys is don't worry whether we win now or we win later. It's we're, we're set for the future. You got to remember, we were rebuilding this team while we were in contention. From 2013 to now, the front office just kept rebuilding and reloading the farm system to now we're bearing those fruits and we're seeing them. Every player that's come up from the farm system has been an instant contributor to the team for a win, walk-off, uh, shutout game, whatever the case may be. So we're looking pretty good now and moving forward into the future. So I expect the Dodgers to not only get their first championship in 31 years, going on 32, but I also expect them to be champions multiple times within the next five years. If not three-peat, at least three out of the five in the coming up years. So I'm LAJ. I want to hear you guys and where you guys' thoughts are, what, where you guys' feelings are, how you guys feel about the Dodgers right now, and are you guys worried about anything? Hopefully you're not after you know a couple of things that I just explained to you guys. Um, be excited. Be ready because it's going to be cool, and we're all going to be celebrating. I don't, know, I don't know if it's on Figueroa or Dodger Stadium. I don't know where it's at. I was too young, but wherever it may be, I hope you guys are there, and we're all celebrating together. And with that being said, make sure you guys subscribe to YouTube. I'll leave the link in the description, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.